Hello, and thank you so much for joining us on another edition of Mark's Madness. I'm Matt Finkel, joined as always by Mark Miller. And Mark, we've got a lot to recap from a rainy Friday night, so let's yeah. jump right in All right. and get started with the Spartans, who are 3 0, and they did it in double overtime against yeah. a good Piqua team. Yeah, it's a, you know, they, they won that one easily last year, but it's always good to win a close game. You know, they, they score so many points, they're in a lot of blowouts, you know, and I think down the stretch last year, that was something new for them when they got into tight ball games. Well, not so much anymore now because they just want to double overtime. As you mentioned, Pick was a good football team, good program. That'll give them confidence if they get into some close games. And they have some really good teams left on their schedule, including this week, Whitmer. Uh, so if they get into a close game or they're not way out in front like they're used to have happening, they can say, hey, we did it against Pick. Well, we can do it again today. Yeah, it's an important win for the yep. team, especially getting into track play where, like you said, it will be very competitive. And mm -hmm. how about Ruben Flowers? Oh. Sets a school record, 13 catches, 205 yards, scores twice. And he that's breaking his own record that he set a couple <laughs> years ago with 11 yeah. catches in a game. The guy's all over the field. It's no surprise because we know he's going to pit D1 yeah. school, but he's really having a senior year. Yeah, he really has. And, and and it's you know it's the other guys too. Yeah. I mean you know you can't just throw it to Ruben. So they've got Rico and they've got you know Lyles. They've got the other guys they can throw to. And they, somebody got to have somebody to get it to him. And the quarterback's doing a great job of that too. But he is definitely the go-to guy. And and I don't know if you can stop him even with a, a double team with high school kids. Yeah, and it's a challenge for any defense. Yeah. Moving on to the MAC now. They opened up conference play, and that's always exciting. Yep. Cold water. Versus Minster, the big game, you called it, uh -huh. two defending state champs, a lot of yeah. intrigue heading into this one, and the Cavs yeah. dominated. Yeah, they did. Uh, you know, you look at the score, and it's 28 nothing. It was 21 nothing at, at halftime, but y if you look at that defense and what they did to Josh Nixon, Josh Nixon, and I, I said it, I thought he and, and maybe even O'Connor, but especially Josh had the best arm of any quarterback in our area. He can really throw it, and they just, they made him move. They did not give him a chance to sit in the pocket. Uh, he did not have wide open receivers to throw to that defense. Six points in three games, two shutouts, and I know it rained a little bit, and that takes a little of the edge off a drop back pass game. But my, my, that defense is really, really good. And Hemelgarn's not bad at quarterback either. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a look at a couple of the plays Jack Hemelgarn made later in the show when we break down a play. He threw for 276 yards, most of those coming in the first half. And think about what the Cavs have done this year. They're three and zero. We know they're used to winning, but they've beaten Kenton, who's very strong. They've beaten Jefferson, who's very strong, and now they've beaten Minster, and it doesn't get any easier. I think Coldwater has St. Henry coming up this yeah, week. Yeah, they got St. Henry this week. That's but right. Anybody you throw at them, they've handled and they've made it look pretty easy so far. Now, all three home games, they go on the road right. to St. Henry, so that'll be a little something different, but yeah. still, uh, yeah, they're, they're really good, and, and Helmogarn is so efficient. You know, just really takes care of the ball and, and makes some tough throws. We'll see a couple of those where he drops them in the bucket pretty good. Yeah. Meanwhile, Marion Local defeats New Bremen, Fort Recovery over Anna, and St. Henry over Parkway. All of those teams, Marion Local, Fort Recovery, and St. Henry, the three winners, are 3-0. Yeah. and Well, it gets interesting because Marion Local is at Minster this weekend, and Coldwater's at St. Henry. So, you know, there's four of those teams we just mentioned. They're yeah. going to go head-to-head -head this So week. there'll be only two unbeatens left yeah. in the MAC after this week. Western Buckeye League keeping things very interesting. Mm -hmm. Because Van Wert, they're involved in another close one. Yeah. And how are the Cougars 1-2? and two? It's, a, it's a good question to ask. I'm sure yeah. he, Coach Recker's asking that. But they, again, blow a big lead. Mm -hmm. Not huge, just 15 points as opposed mm -hmm. to 20 last time. But yeah. anyway, multiple scores, and right. they fall to OG. Yeah, you know, he did a great job of getting them back because when they let that one get away against St. Henry, or St. Mary's, they had OG coming up. That's a good team. You got to get refocused. You got to get ready. They did. They came out of the block strong, 15-0. Then they, they lose that one in very close fashion. So now, you know, they, they play Shawnee, which is probably a good time to play a team that's undermanned a little bit. Uh, but, I mean, Keith Recker's got a tough job. He's got to get them to come back twice in a row from games they know they could have won. Uh, that's a good football team. They just got to get their mental side get back so they can play good again. Second straight one-point loss, yeah. and like you said, it's tough, but this is a team that when we talked to them in the preseason, they knew they were going to face adversity and they were ready for it. I don't know if they were expecting it to come this early, yeah. but it's a good time for it to come because there's plenty of season left for them to bounce back. Well, there are a lot of young kids who are not used to winning, so they're still all, all in with Coach Recker, and, and uh, I'm sure he'll do a good job of getting them prepared. Uh, it's important they get off to a good start against Shawnee, and then they could just snowball from there. 
Wapakoneta defeated Kenton. That was the other big mm -hmm. game in the in the Western Buckeye League. The, that game has decided the league title the last two years. Mm -hmm. And Kenton winning two years ago, Wapak winning last year. Wapak won easily. Is anybody going to beat Wapak this year? Well, yeah, I don't think they're as dominant as they were last year. When when I you know ten and zero didn't surprise a lot of people. There are some people on their schedule yet that can still beat them, uh, but they're a little better than I think anybody thought they were. They're, they're pretty strong all the way around. And, and this week will be a big week in the WBL too. Like like the MAC we just talked about. Walpock and Elida plays. Elida puts up huge numbers on offense. You know, Walpock's really good on defense. So something's got to give. Kenton and St. Mary's going to eliminate one of them. You know, OG Salina, two undefeateds in the league going to knock one of those down a peg. So this thing starts to sort out here as we start to hit midseason, and this is week four, so we'll find out. Moving to the BBC now, Van Buren's 0-3. McComb handled Van Buren th I wouldn't have guessed this that. week. Yeah, and I know we talked about it last week. They were your most surprising 0-2 yeah. team. Now they're 0-3. Mm -hmm. Can Coach Schaup and the Knights recover? Well, you know, I, it'll take some work. Be interesting to see what angle he takes. Now, those are three good teams they lost to. Allen East, Bluffton, and Macomb. Yes. All right, so nothing to be ashamed of. They didn't play them very close. They didn't play very well. So they got some work to do, but they just got to get a W, and then they'll start to think, hey, here we go. We can have a run and maybe slide in the playoffs like we did last year. I know that's what their goal was coming in is back-to-back -back playoffs, and it's going to be tough right now. LB defeats Corey Rawson. We have PG over River Riverdale. Arlington gets a victory over Hopewell Loudon. That's a good win for Arlington. Yes. Close one. Seven to six. Yeah. And then Macomb. Are they the cream of the crop in the yep. BBC when we name all those teams? We're I looking so. at Macomb as the favorite. I think so. Liberty yeah. Benton, don't, don't, you know, that Bowling Green thing was kind of an anomaly. I don't, I don't know if BG's that, that strong, but yeah. they got waxed pretty good up there. I still think Macomb, Liberty Benton, Week 10 decides it. Uh, and Liberty Benton can play with Macomb, but I think right now Macomb's the best team. And Lipsick also picked up its first win yep. against North Baltimore. Yep. So now it's time to break down the play. Let's get to it. Let's go back to that battle between defending state champs Coldwater and Minster and Mark you were there on the call show us what Jack Hemmelgarn did so well to help the Cavs get the win all right first quarter here you go bunch to the right Hemmelgarn at quarterback in the shotgun motions now you got quads right you're going to flood the zone they're all over the place ah, I find somebody that's wide open that's Aaron Harlemert and he stuck it right on his shoulder pad put him in the end zone for a touchdown that's the first score of the game take a look at it again here now let's stop it right there look at this you think he's got some room to decide and, and look at who's going to be open? And then you're going to see, as we continue it, breaking wide open down the middle. Arms flailing, boy, and inside. Uh, McKibben had his arm up. He was open, too. Too many guys to guard. Minster just couldn't guard all those guys. Going to see later in the game now a little pocket movement. You know, Hemmelgarn is really good at moving his feet and kind of throwing uh, off balance a little bit. That was a tough throw, not a touchdown. But he stuck it right on the sideline where only his guy, McKibben, could get it. Here you're going to see it again. It's the corner route. And he got in front, and he did a nice job of breaking his route off in front of him as the defender kept going. Right there's the ball, the catch, the sideline. That's beautiful. One more time, we're going to take a look at it. This is even more pocket movement. Look at that offensive line. They are so good. They just give him time to read, and that's the one I'm talking about, dropping it in the bucket. Over the guy in front, in front of the guy behind the receiver, only the receiver can catch it, and Hemmelgarn is really, really good. Here's going to get another look. Not a very big guy. Can obviously focus through hands and see his receivers down the field. Another great pass and a great game. It's impressive what he can do in the pocket. He never looks flustered, mm -hmm. and that's so important. And when you have an offensive line like Coldwater does that can give you that time, and he, he has such a good internal clock of when to get rid of the ball, yes, he does. it makes the Cavs' offense really dangerous, yeah. and we already know what their defense is capable yeah. of. Yeah. So they're playing, they're playing well right now. Yeah. All right, let's continue on recapping from Friday night. Move to non-conference games now. LCC, a big win over yeah. Ada in a come-from-behind fashion. Huge night for Ethan O'Connor. Boy, how things have changed from week one, huh? When they looked horrible. Right. They looked like 0-10 coming at you. Then they go to Delphi St. John's and they win, but we don't know how good St. John's is. They're 0-3 right now. They're struggling. This is a quality win because Ada's pretty good. They went over there and won a close one in O'Connor. He's going to have those kind of numbers if they're going to win. He's going to run it or throw it almost every down, and he's playing well the last two weeks. And the rest of the NWC competing besides Ada, also in non-conference games, the NWC starts league play week four, 
and everybody else looked really good. I know Ada yeah. lost, but Grove beat Patrick Henry 32-30. Yep. Great mm -hmm. road victory for the yep. Bulldogs. Yeah, that's because Patrick Henry's good. Oh, very good. Yep. That was a good matchup. You got Bluffton over Fort Lormy. The Redskins are 0-3. How about that? Yeah, well, Bluffton's 3-0, and too. So, you yeah. know, one way or the other, I I'm surprised at Fort Lormy. Yeah. yeah. They've played good teams. Crestview put up 51 against Wayne Trace, and, that, and that's, that's a rivalry. You know, always that's a, a good tough game. game. Yeah. You know, Wayne Trace down a little bit. They graduated a lot, but that's a good win for Crestview. Absolutely, and Alan East continues to roll. Wayne beating yep. Waynesfield Goshen 55. Gave up 83 nothing. total yards. And that's then, pretty good defense. Yeah, I don't care who you're playing. That's great, D. And Alan yeah. East can run the ball. And yeah. speaking of running the ball, <laughs> Spencerville yeah. beats Hullgate 82 to yeah. 22. They had 653 total yards in the game. 620 of those on yeah. the ground. Couple guys, huge nights. Zach yeah. Gokey, 251. Chris Picker, 198. They I averaged 13 yards per play. What more can you say? I, I mean, just want to know what Zerby's doing throwing the ball for 33 <laughs> yards. I mean, come on. It was even a rainy night, John. Right. Keep it on the ground. But they have a, a devastating run run attack, and, and they're playing good. And uh, there there's some real head-on collisions coming up down the road in that conference. Oh, looking forward to them. Yeah. And speaking of, we can continue with the good running game. Jefferson has yeah. one as well. They it's beat, good to see them get back yeah. on track. Jefferson. You know, big win, 320-some yards rushing exactly. after the cold water thing. That cold water thing, people are going to look at the end of the season and say, wow, it wasn't that Jefferson wasn't good that night. It's just that cold water was really, really good that exactly. night. Exactly. So Jefferson finally got a home game as well, too. So yeah. that must have been nice at Stadium Park, and mm -hmm. they defeated Fairview 42-3. to So uh, we're looking forward to those NWC teams taking yep. on each other, and we'll get some of that this week because we've got a lot of great conference games coming up mm -hmm. week four. What are you looking forward to most? I'm looking at Ada's, Ada Spencerville. Yeah. That's at Spencerville. I think that's, you know, that's the classic run versus pass, you know. Uh, we did that game last year, and, and it, was, it was a good one. Lima Senior and Whitmer. You know, uh, Piqua was a good test. Whitmer will be a good test. Yes. I'm not, it's not Whitmer of old that they're going to dominate and win the state championship. They're good, and they got a lot of guys up, up there, so they'll, they'll be good. In the WBR, like Salina OG, they're both 2-0 and o in the league. One of them's obviously going to lose. Uh, we'll see who, who is still up there. And then the MAC, they always give you the games. We already talked about it. Four of the contenders playing against each other, St. Henry, Coldwater, Marion, Local, Minster. Uh, everything starts to crystallize now. We start to get a little clearer picture of what these league races will be like. We got the NWCC opening play as well with Perry versus Ridgemont, Harden Northern, Waynesfield Goshen, Lormy versus Riverside. You mentioned the WBL, Bath Defiance, mm -hmm. Salina OG, Lada Wapak, St. Mary's Kenton, Van Wert, Shawnee. LCC takes on Edgewood. The interesting thing about LCC now is there's not a lot of local teams left on their schedule because mm -hmm. everybody else is in league. And I don't know anything about Edgewood. Yeah. I just root I. for the T-Birds. Yeah. I don't care about Edgewood. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. That's easy for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So lots to look forward to. Let's show you our rebroadcast schedule. And it starts Friday, 11 p.m. on WOSN with that big one. Marion Local Minster, another battle of defending state champions. Friday, 11 p.m., WTLW, Crestview versus Columbus Grove, Northwest Conference action. Saturday, 5 p.m., start time for this one, St. Mary's versus Ken. That's a WBL matchup. That's because the early start time is for ONU Football Live. You can see it Saturday, 7 p.m., Baldwin Wallace at Ohio Northern University as they play under the lights at Dow Roberson Stadium. And then Saturday at 10 p.m., it will be the Whitmer vs. Lima Senior game for you. Check out the greatest show on turf from Spartan Stadium. So lots to look forward to. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Mark's Madness. We'll be back next week to break it all down. For you from Mark Miller, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next week.